We are here today to answer a perennial question. Is it more fun to ride a slow bike fast or a fast bike slow? And I gotta say, it really depends on the conditions. It really depends on where you are, what you're doing, you know? I think on road, it's usually more fun to ride a slow bike fast. And why is that? It's because you get to use the thing, man. You don't feel scared of it. And environments like this where there's lots of trees, there's lots of stuff in the way, there's crap in the road, a small, agile bike like this is a lot of fun. It actually really is, you know? Especially when it's dialed in like this RS457, which if you guys don't know, as I'm wide open here in fourth gear, this is a giveaway bike on yamynoob.co. So make sure you sign up as a member, get your chances locked and loaded to win. This giveaway is gonna be short, so make sure you get out of the win. Anyways, the conditions matter a lot, right? If you're out on the open highway all the time, right, just flat, straight roads, a slow bike is not gonna be fun. I'm gonna be totally honest. It's not fun being on the highway the vast majority of the time on a Ninja 400 or something like that, you know, as I avoid some of these road conditions. It's just not gonna be fun. If you go and take a bike that only makes 50 horsepower on a big, fast, straight road. It's just, you know, it's it's okay, it's fine. If you've never ridden a motorcycle before, it can be enjoyable, but overall, it's not a good time. Consequently, if you take a super bike out on track, it can be a ton of fun, because <laughs> you actually get to open it up and use it and really romp on it. But it really matters what kind of track you're taking it on, you know? If you're taking a super bike out to Coda, as we watch these vultures here, geez. If you take a super bike out to Coda, it's gonna be a lot of fun. You got horsepower, you get to use it on the back straight. But if you take a super bike out to a kart track, eh, it's not gonna be as fun, you know? <laughs> it really depends on the horsepower and how much road you actually have to play with, you know what I mean? If you got a lot of road to play with, then the more horsepower is better. If you're on tight twisties like this out on the road, it's not nearly as fun because you're having to manage a lot of horsepower versus going wide open half the time like you are with this thing and what's really fun about a slower bike like this too is if you got the experience it can just feel like you're playing around it doesn't feel scary or dangerous really because you're so within check of what the machine can do if you've got a good amount of experience whipping a little bike around like this is just so much fun now off-road, I really do think slow bike is better. Lighter bike is better off-road, really. But slower usually indicates lighter as well too, unless you're talking 450 hopped up motocross bike. But most of the time, yeah, something lighter, something smaller, something easier to manage is usually more fun in those conditions as well. But again, you know, similar to the road bike stuff, if you're on fast gravel roads, you know, a big adventure bike actually might be a whole lot more fun than a little dual sport that's gonna be flailing around a bunch, you know? And how fun is it that you get to really charge these twisties like this, you know? Avoiding the gunk in the middle we see there, you know? And on the little bike, you can. It's really no biggie. Wide open between these two corners. How fun is that on the RS457? But if I had to pick, people always say, oh, if you had to pick fast bike or slow bike, which one would you do? I always want fast bike fast. <laughs> if I'm riding in the conditions that allow me to use it, right? If I'm riding in a place that allows me to be fast, then yes, I want fast bike, I want horsepower. But more often than not on road, I've been finding myself going back the power ladder a little bit because it's just a little more enjoyable to ride these more easy going bikes. But stuff's really changing with easy going, you know? Like, this little motorcycle makes almost 50 horsepower, weighs under 400 pounds. It's linear, it's progressive, it's modern. You know, it's, it's nice. And I think it's why the categories like this and the ZX4RR, they're really exploding and people are really enjoying these motorcycles because you get to really play with them, you know? And people are finally figuring out that for a lot of the places that people own and ride, you know, a leader bike just is way too much bike. 
most of the time, right? But yeah, if you're on the highway, you actually get to crack the thing open. It can be very enjoyable, but most of the time, you're not really using it, right? You really get to use this little RS457, and I really dig this bike. You guys probably saw my first ride and impression on this thing. It's a lot of fun. And it really matters what kind of little bike you're on, you know? Like, there's a big difference between this RS457 and even a, a little Ninja 300, you know? A Ninja 300 can be fun, but this is way more fun. Because it's just that little bit more capable, you know? It's just that little bit better, a little bit more capable, but not quite to the level that a Super Sport is, right? We're still talking, you know, being off of a Super Sport by quite a bit. And even though it's got an aluminum twin spar frame, it's not quite as, you know, razor sharp as, as a Super Sport. Like as we break here into this little hairpin, it still wiggles a little bit under brakes. It still feels a little wallowy, but for the road, it's fine. Just fun. Like I'm wide open without having my hand on the other bar. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. <laughs> uh, and that's the fun of a little bike. Slow bike fast. I'll tell you what though. You will learn a whole lot more riding slow bike fast than you ever will fast bike slow. You don't really learn much riding fast bike slow, honestly. Especially if you're just cruising around town. Gosh, I really can't stand these guys. They're like, yeah, bro, I freaking ride an R1. And I'm like, dude, you survive on an R1. You don't ride an R1. The R1 rides you. <laughs> you make it to your destination because the R1 allows you to. <laughs> you're, not, you're not riding that thing. You're surviving, man. Absolutely not. I ride an R1. These guys with six months riding experience talking about how they ride an R1, bro. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. And I tell you, nothing is more fun than humiliating a big bike with a little bike because you spent the time and you learned with it because you understood grip and you understood how to go wide open and you understood line selection. And that's what makes it fun, man. That makes it a lot of fun. I do wish this bike was equipped with the quick shifter. That's a favorite feeling of mine. And it's one you can get on a big bike at a big track, but you sure as hell can't do it on the street, is uh, leaned over wide open and you crank it more because you know you got grip and you don't miss, you know, you got a lot of room. I love being cranked over and wide open. I love cranking my hog. <laughs> I love cranking the hog. But yeah, it's a perennial debate in motorcycling, man. I see it all the time in the comments. Guys be like, yeah, I got a big bike, then I went to a small bike, then I went back to the big bike, then I went back to the small bike. I think it's great that we have so many different displacement categories available to motorcycling because that gives you a breadth of experience and a breadth of, you know, fun factor on these bikes. I wouldn't want a motorcycle that, uh, you know, I wouldn't want the motorcycle industry to only be slow bikes. We need, we need fast bikes too, come on guys. Because uh, without the fast bikes, you can't appreciate the slow bikes and vice versa. That's why I think you got to do both in your motorcycling career. You got to do the fun fast stuff, but you also got to do the slow stuff too. Because when you ride a slower bike like this and you get to really use the thing, you come to really appreciate what the faster bike can really do. And you start to see, wow, the little bike can actually do way more than I thought. You're like, as long as I maintain my momentum and ride the thing, you can actually do quite a bit. And let's be honest, guys, none of us are MotoGP stars. None of us are World Superbike stars. I mean, there's really very few people that can extract maximum performance, even out of a 600. 
I feel like for my skill set, I can extract the vast majority of performance out of this category. You know, if you put me on a Ninja 400 that's race prepped on a track, I can extract most of what it can offer, you know? And even then, you'll see some Moto America kid come by and chop off five or six seconds off your lap time, and you're like, how the hell did he do that? <laughs> And especially on road, you're not extracting any of the performance. Like, you guys see me, I'm going wide open and stuff around here, but I'm really just playing around. I'm not trying to carve up PVs on this random twisty road in Austin, Texas. I'm not out here trying to do a lap time. But the little bike can make you feel like you're trying to go for a lap time, which is pretty cool, you know? It's pretty cool to be able to be leaned over and to, oh, pick it up wide open. the brakes a little later there keep forgetting it's a momentum bike <laughs> there's times it feels like I'm on a 660 and I'm like oh yeah I got plenty of torque and then I go to grab the power and I'm like wait what <laughs> there's still power <laughs> you gotta roll these corners baby you gotta roll them so folks let me know what you think about slow bike fast or fast bike slow what's your take on it do you prefer riding a slower bike fast do you like going fast on a fast bike I know I do but there's really a few places where I can go fast on a fast bike. But I'll tell you what, I almost always prefer lighter over heavier, that's for sure. I think that's why I love the 600 category. Feels fast, but feels light. Feels small, doesn't feel big. Plenty of power. Just a perfect motorcycle in my opinion. But this RS457 is quite the machine. Make sure you get your chances locked and loaded to win it over on yamminoob.co. Make sure you get signed up to become a member and get your entries locked and loaded to win this thing because this is a spicy little meatball, man. It's a great little motorcycle. Great entry level option for riders. And so much fun for the experienced motorcyclists as well. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Well, you made it to the end of the video. Uh, and this RS457, what's that? It wants me to, oh, it wants me to tell you to keep watching Yami Noob. Click that video right over here and keep gathering all the motorcycle knowledge that you need to become the best rider you can possibly be. But it, oh, it also, also wants me to tell you to go to yaminoob.co and get signed up to win this amazing motorcycle. So do that and uh, keep watching the show.